pride in the newsroom. Is it a new era for Iran and the West? After a decade of stalemate over Tehran's nuclear ambitions, negotiators suddenly seem to be bargaining in earnest. At the open this Tuesday of talks with the US, Europe and also China and Russia, an Iranian official declaring his, na his nation no longer wants to walk in the dark. His European counterpart responding, we've seen some positive mood music coming out of Tehran. Cautious words, the Geneva talks hot on the heels of a major charm offensive by the man who once upon a time was Iran's chief nuclear negotiator, new president Hassan Rouhani, star of the show you'll remember at the United Nations in New York last month, a trip that included a phone conversation with a conciliatory U.S. counterpart. The other question everyone's asking, though, is has Iran's conservative supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, given a true green light to Rouhani's team in Geneva? What's on the table and off the table in those talks? It's early days, but could uh, Roh uh, Khamenei agree to normalize ties with the United States? Today in the France 24 debate, Iran, let's talk. And with us, you can read his analysis in the Huffington Post, Milad Jokar of the National Iranian American Council. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, former French ambassador to Tehran, François Nicolot, thank you for being with us. Good evening. From Washington, Robert Zarate of the Foreign Policy Initiative Think Tank. Welcome back to the France 24 debate. And keeping a close eye on Iran's relationship with its immediate neighbors is Didier Chaudet, a research fellow at the Institute for Perspective and Security Studies in Europe, the France 24 debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and on Twitter, our hashtag F24Debate. Too soon to judge the words of the Iranian Deputy Foreign Minister on whether or not today's talks are groundbreaking. Milad Jokar, um, too soon to judge, but um, are you surprised by the speed at which events are now happening? Well, um, well first of all, I just, I'm no longer at the National Iranian American no longer, Council. Okay. <laughs> that was last year. Um, well, surprised, the, there has come a time when um, both sides uh, have common interest to find a deal. And so I'm not really surprised there have been some signs now. Uh, okay, well, so, so when, Rouhani, years, when Rouhani goes to New York, you knew right away, we're going to be in Geneva and we're going to... No, not necessarily right, right away, but for example, Mr. Uh, Fabius, French Foreign Minister, uh, said right after uh, Rouhani's election that a deal could be within reach, within, an, uh, within next year. And also in Iran, I uh, just got, got back from Iran recently, and we can feel that the Iranian leadership is kind of preparing the Iranian population for maybe a, a potential deal and to bring back from this negotiation something that could be sell back in Iran. Because also the real problem, the, the difficulties, is to be able to sell a deal back home, whether it be in Iran or in Washington. And this is not all um, an easy thing to do. François Nicolo, you've seen negotiations come and go. The first ones date back to 2003 on this issue. That's Did you right. wake up this morning thinking this time's different? Yes, it is a bit different. And uh, the Iranians are in a hurry. Uh, Rouhan is in a hurry because what he has promised during the campaign, you know, he had uh, during the campaign uh, sentences like uh, it's no use to have centrifuges spinning if the economy is not spinning, if the life of people is not spinning. And uh, then now he has to deliver to the people. Eh? He has been elected on the promise the sanctions would be lifted uh, soon. And now... Uh, he is a little bit in the hands of the of the West because uh, he, now the, the negotiators have put on the table uh, a plan, a, apparently an ambitious plan. This was today. Tomorrow, the West, the Russians and the Chinese also, but they will follow, will have to respond. And uh, tomorrow afternoon, by the end of the afternoon, we'll know if there is a real chance of a breakthrough or not. By tomorrow afternoon... Uh, Robert Zarate, uh, we don't know much of what happened with the Iranians' initial presentation, otherwise, other than that the news agencies um, uh, insisting heavily on the fact that there was a nifty PowerPoint presentation. 
Uh, what do you see as uh, being the acid test as to whether or not we're really going to have substantive talks here? Well, well, Francois, the first thing is uh, I think US, many in the U.S. Congress want ne U.S. negotiators to approach this not as trying to get Iranian concessions, but actually as getting Iranian compliance. And that's compliance with over a decade's worth of U.N. Security Council resolutions uh, demanding that Iran stop its enrichment and reprocessing activities uh, until it can get a clean bill of health from the International Atomic Energy Agency. But uh, on the other side here, we're seeing uh, elements of the Obama administration who are extremely eager uh, to get a deal no matter what. But uh, what you're hearing from both sides, uh, uh, Republicans and Hang Democrats on the Hang on a sec. You're saying Hill, signs that the Obama administration wants a deal no matter what. What do you mean? Meaning that they would be happy to get some deal uh, that has a, a symbolic potentially just merely a symbolic cap on Iran's uh, nuclear program, but doesn't actually deal with Iran's growing capability to build a nuclear weapon on very, very short notice, and in the worst case, more quickly than inspectors could catch them doing it. Uh, François Nicolas, this is yes, a I bit mean, the opposite to, of what you just said. Yes, one has to remember that Kerry said uh, it's better to have no deal than a bad deal. Huh? So that, that uh, sets the limits. I'm not too sure that the Americans are ready to accept any kind of deal. And the pressure is too high from the Congress or different lobbies. And uh, now uh, we will see uh, if um, they're satisfied by the proposals of the Iranians. But we have to remember that there is also the administration or the civil servants who are entangled in the legal uh, consideration, the resolution of the Security Council. If people enter too much in this kind of game, we won't find the momentum for this negotiation. All right, uh, one first reaction on Twitter. Uh, nuclear negotiations seem to be going well for Iran. I hope that uh, they can continue in the long run. Um, again, as, as Robert Zarati was saying, this is all about uh, um, all about the I Iranian nuclear program. That's the heart of the matter. Sanam Chantier has the story. The P5 plus one group hope Tehran will scale back its nuclear enrichment program, which many nations fear could aid in making a bomb. Iran insists it has the right to enrich uranium for its civilian program, but has hinted it's open to talking about levels and quantities. Its nuclear capabilities are already well advanced. Tucked away amid these mountains is the Natanz nuclear site in the country's central Isfahan province. It is these spinning centrifuges at Natanz that present a daunting challenge for the negotiators in Geneva. Here, Uranium hexafluoride gas is fed into centrifuges for enrichment. Iran has been converting some of its low enriched uranium at 3.5 percent, used for civilian nuclear power plants, to medium enriched at about 20 percent, which they say they need for a medical research reactor. This form can be upgraded to 90 percent, the level needed to make nuclear weapons, within months. Currently, Iran has 8,000 kilograms of uranium enriched at 3.5 percent and 200 kilograms enriched at 20 percent. Since 2006, the Islamic Republic has rejected UN Security Council demands that it halt enrichment, leading to increasingly stringent sanctions. They have bitten deeply, squeezing Iran's oil exports, costing Tehran billions of dollars in lost revenue. The question now is with inflation spiraling and the economy struggling, how willing is Iran to give up a cherished part of its nuclear program? That's a question I'll put to you, Didier Chaudet. How, how willing is Iran uh, to basically stand down? The, the thing is, I think the Iranians have been eager to negotiate before uh, Mr. Rouhani. Now the question is that you need to be two to tango. And it's always very difficult for people in for the presidency in Tehran, even when they are open-minded, to be followed by people on the ground. There is a big pressure from the conservative part of the political establishment in Iran, but also to be listened to sometime in Washington, D.C. Because at the end of the day, we need also the Americans to accept the fact that they need to negotiate. If it is only about compliance, if it is about the Iranians feeling that they lose, of course it will not, uh, it will not happen. 
The fear that I have is that from the American point of view, what I hear is that sanctions and the pressure have brought us here. When from the Iranian point of view, uh, it is just a political move to get something better for the Iranian population. If we are not listening to the Iranian voice, we will lose this opportunity to negotiate again the same way we have done with Mr. Khatami in the past. Robert Zarate, beyond compliance, as you put it, the, the first, first step is to get the Iranians to comply. Uh, uh, beyond compliance, what can the G5 plus one, these, these negotiators in Geneva, offer Tehran? Well, that's a great question, Francois. Uh, actually, if you look back in history, over the last decade of negotiations with Iran, uh, in, in June 2006, Iran was offered an amazing deal by the P5 plus one. They were offered uh, a comprehensive long-term agreement that would have, in essence, begun the process of normalizing relations, even provided Iran with a light water reactor, as well as um, cooperation in e the economic sector, the civil av aviation sector, and other uh, critical commercial sectors. All Iran had to do was suspend and stop enrichment and reprocessing activities. Iran said no. And, uh, you know, at, at this point, what I, I, I think right now, we're, we're looking at playing small ball. Iran is going to offer to do something with its 20 percent medium enriched uh, stockpile of uranium, and uh, it, 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 they'll want some, some sanctions relief. The question is, what level of sanctions relief will U.S. diplomats offer, and will that pass, uh, will Congress be okay with that? Do you agree, Milan? Well, um, sanctions relief, that's also an important point, because we all we often ask what the Iranians have on the table, but we also need to know what the Americans and the P5 plus one put on the table. And it's like a poker game. We're not going to show our hands. We're not going to say, here is what we are ready to put on the table. And actually, um, today it has been said that uh, they have agreed, both sides have agreed to um, keep these talks confidential and not to share any details. So we're not going to see that PowerPoint. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, no, we're not going to see this maybe later, but not for now. And um, also, it is not also because some people in Washington are happy to get a deal. It, is, it has become a necessity. And Iran, Iran's economy, yeah, is uh, hurt by sanctions. But it doesn't mean that it is in a position of weakness. Um, 2013 is not 2003. So there has been deals before, missed opportunities. But today is different. The um, chaotic re um, situation in the Middle East um, also benefits from Iran. I think that Iran is not weakened by what is happening in the region right now. And if there's to be a deal, it is also for common interest both for Iran and the Europeans and also the Americans for, uh, for the region for the region and also structuring the region to have a long-term vision, not just to find short-term agreements and political agreements, but also to have a restructuring of the Middle East for longer term. All right, the uh, situation is different, you say. Uh, on Twitter, Max is saying, today the US and Iran are both being reasonable for once. We're getting a lot of viewers uh, thinking that everything that's happening in Geneva is a positive step. However, last week, the Israeli Prime Minister sat down with France 24 correspondent Gallagher Fenwick. Benjamin Netanyahu's message to the French could be summed up in one word, beware. France, like the Jewish people, uh, was the victim of a great historic mistake of not standing up to a radical regime, falling, in fact, for, for a dupe, for a ruse. Don't do that again. Don't do it again. It happened in North Korea. It happened before in Europe. Don't do that. Stand your ground. Don't make a historic mistake. Uh, France has had a good position. And I would say to uh, uh, to the people in government of France and to President uh, Hollande, whom I respect, vous devez rester fort, très fort. Stay strong, he says. Ambassador Nicolo, is it right to make this comparison with uh, the uh, famous m meeting with Munich where uh, the West caved in, uh, Britain and France caved in to Adolf Hitler? Munich has been used so many times, you know, it's a kind of a bit of a trite uh, comparison. 
But uh, it's true that uh, Netanyahu is a bit embarrassed by the, the personality and the diplomatic offensive of uh, Rouhani. Uh, he was much more comfortable with Ahmadinejad. Eh? Ahmadinejad was the perfect enemy. And uh, now things are changing, things are changing fast. And um, it's difficult for him. So he, have, he has entered a kind uh, of blitzkrieg. There is a Netanyahu uh, blitzkrieg also. Um, we'll see the result, but uh, obviously he's, uh, he's swimming against the current at the moment. But, but is he, is he, can he legitimately be worried? Everybody can be legitimately worried about the Iranian uh, nuclear program. Not so much because the Iranians are close to the bomb. This is not true. But it's true that it is an ambiguous program. It is an ambiguous program because the, uh, the atomic uh, technologies are ambiguous by nature. And now this has to be clarified. I mean, we have to come out of the ambiguity on the right side, of course. And uh, for this, uh, Iran is ready to make uh, lots of concession. They are ready to accept uh, lots of control, you know, extra control from the IEA. Um, they're, they're ready to, to make many gestures, but of course, they want something in return. And what they want in return are two things, that people recognize that the technology they have developed, this famous enrichment technology, is legitimate. They have a legitimate uh, right to develop it. And of course, they want the, the sanction to, to, to disappear, at least slowly, at least progressively. But uh, of course, that, there is a sanctioned fatigue in Iran. And this is why they are in a hurry. And we'll talk about the sanctions fatigue after the break. One question about this, Robert Zarate. Many ordinary Iranians say, how come Israel gets to have the bomb and not us? What do you answer to that? Sure. Well, one, Iran signed the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, and so has obliged itself to act in certain ways with regards to its peaceful nuclear uh, program, in particular to, to be transparent about what it's doing. Um, there are four countries in the world right now that are not in the NPT. Israel, India, Pakistan, and now North Korea, which withdrew from the NPT. So those countries are not obliged to the terms of the treaty. Now, uh, and, and that's basically what the, the, the big difference. Uh, Iran is an NPT state. Israel is not. All right. So uh, but for the stability of the region, well, we have to uh, acknowledge that nuclear weapons in the Middle East is dangerous. And it, anywhere in the world, it is dangerous. Um, it is not just about NPT or legal issues. It is also about security uh, issues and when you have Israel at war and tensions with its neighbors, this is simply not safe to have nuclear weapons in the region. But also I wanted to say that uh, concerning Mr. Netanyahu, uh, being worried about a nuclear armed Iran doesn't mean being against negotiations. And what we have today is the P5 plus one in Iran at the table on the, of the negotiations, willing to talk and find a deal Within, um, right, so you can still be worried, year. but talk at the same time. We're going to take a quick Absolutely. break. We're going to pick up sure. on this. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate.